episode of the Figma best practices series, a series where I will explain to you how you can set up your new Figma design files the best and most efficient way possible. Let's begin. Before we jump in Figma straight away, let's take a step back and look at the benefits of using those Figma best practices. So why your design file should be made out of components following best practices. First, it should be very efficient for you to iterate later on once your design files expand. It helps your team exchange library components and generally communicate your designs with the rest of the design team. And it will help you deliver the best deliverable design files to your team's developers. So it will help you communicate your designs into code. To recap on that, you will be creating efficient files, you will be fostering good communication, and you will translate your designs into code as accurately as possible. Now, let's begin with using as an example a free account and you will see how you can start by creating a new file on simply an account that you can just create with figma for absolutely free and then let's go here hit on create new team and let's go right here create team let's add a name figma design series and create the team at this point, we have no teammates, so let's just skip this for now and then choose starter. You can see here, there is already a preset that Figma gives you as a team project. You will want to delete that by going here, right clicking and selecting delete. Then yes, you wanna delete the project and you can start from scratch by hitting here, new project, giving it the name of best practices this is just the simple name that i'm giving it you can just name it test whatever you want to name it so i will create my project with this name and then how to start with a new design file from scratch it should be fairly straightforward by looking at here new design file and clicking here we have successfully created our first design file you can see it's completely empty. First thing, you want to give it a name so you can actually find it then very quickly once you look through your designs. And let's name it best practices. And that's it. Then the second thing that we want to, to do is choose our icons. So we want to choose our icons that we will be using. Uh, to choose our icons, we can go on home we can go to explore community search i like personally the material ui icons and that is simply because it just has a the full icon oops sorry not this one material ui icons and i can just hit here search for results i can see here this is the one i know i am familiar with and as I was saying, the reason why I go for this is because I like that it has the full set of the possible icons that I might need. I want to choose filled. Feel free to choose whatever style you might want. You might have some brand guidelines you might want to follow. But for my example here, I will choose all of them, copy them, and then paste them inside my file, and then close this. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure you separate your library, which is basically the page that will have all of your components. So you will be using inside your files, which we will dive into what do I mean by components and with the rest of the screens of the files and pages that you start designing the actual screens and layout. So first you want to add your three pages, which is the max for the free option. Then you want to name this high fidelity or else delivery. 
then you want to name this low fidelity or else discovery and then you want to name this that you have your icons already library so we will start by working on the library you can already see we actually already have our first components and the way to see that to check that is by zooming in select a random icon and you can see here on the right tab on the left tab sorry that there is an icon here that looks like a playstation arrow kind of thing and this means that this component is a master component so you have double checked that you have the icons on master components which is great and we want to proceed like that then the next thing is to create your first component the first component that i will show you how to create is a button i want to proceed in order to create a button the way to start in order to make a button is by going on frame you want to make sure you, that you select frame you select nothing from here and then you just click here because you are creating your own component from scratch so you zoom into this frame that you have just created and the second step is make sure you add auto layout you want to always add auto layout for a button specifically i want to make sure that there is a horizontal layout i will give it the values that i want to give it to and this is the third step that you should do so start giving the exact values that you want the button to have in which case i want to give it a, sp a spacing of eight this will be the spacing between whatever item you end up adding inside your button then i want to add some padding of 16 from the sides and then i want to add another padding of 16 from top to bottom and then hit enter and then i also want to make sure that whatever content i end up adding inside the button whatever item i end up adding inside it will be aligned to the center so i go here and then select center and then i also want to make sure that i have double checked here in terms of how wide and how tall the button is and then i want to keep it as hug i don't mind this because it will be adaptable and responsive to as i add the content inside but i want to keep a fixed height to 48 this is my favorite uh, size for a button i found from testing from previous experience that when you design a button for example for a mobile screen it is the best kind of height that you can add so all types of finger sizes can actually tap on it with ease in which case i will proceed with that then the next thing i want to do is add the text inside the button so we'll click here on text another thing is by hitting the t key on your keyboard and then you can add the text don't add it inside the button yet or and what you want to do is add button say button as an example text and what you want to do is make sure you are following the brand guidelines with your typography here let's say for example your brand guidelines is open sans uh, go here on text select open sans search for it and then simply hit enter you want to change the weight of the text i want to go back to regular i think bold is a bit too too thick and not as applicable for a button then i want to scale it down to 16 pixels and 130 percent line spacing so make sure every time you add something inside make sure you know the values that you add inside here and let's proceed by standardizing this button, this text styling uh, for all button texts. And by doing that is by going here, text, text styles, and hitting the cross here, create a style. And I want to name this style button one. Um, I might, because I might have a second button typography in the future. What is this used for? Is used for buttons and create style then what i want to do next is to add the text inside the button here inside the frame and, and one way is to simply drag and drop or simply cut select the frame 
and paste. And you can see both ways, every time I add the text inside, you can see the frame resizes to hug the content. So it resizes the width to hug around the button, uh, around the text with the padding that I wanted to give it earlier. So 16 and 16. And now to jump into the spacing, I might be wanting, for example, uh, an icon inside here. So an example is let's add an arrow. Say I might be wanting to make this uh, button to say next or something like that. So I will add an icon. Let's change the color for now to be brandless. So let's just make it black and white. And I have successfully added the icon inside my button here. You can see I just drag and dropped. So I can drag it outside again, drop it inside. It will always be centered with the spacing of eight as I have pre-selected it when I was first creating the frame. So you can see bit by bit moving slowly to creating the component. It's, it helps me by making sure I'm using the frame and, and the, using the auto layout. It makes it a lot easier when I start to add things inside. And uh, yeah, basically that is a way. And then let's go by creating this into our first component. So in order to create this into a component, you want to select it, go up here and you see where it says create a component. You can simply select this and we have successfully created our first component. Now, the second step I want to do personally is to select here. And the reason why I'm selecting here is because maybe at some point in the future, I will want to uh, have a button that perhaps might not need an icon inside. So in order to do that fairly efficiently will be by selecting the arrow or the icon that I have added inside, then go to layer and then where it says create Boolean property, I will select this and then name this as show arrow. And when you are here, you want to make sure that there is true or false here and then simply create property. You will see in a moment why I have just done this. Then another thing you want to do, let's say you want to have a primary and a secondary button. You can create a component variant. You can select your component, in which case this is your master component and go here and create a variant, add variant. You have successfully created the variant. You want to make sure you name this variant into secondary. And then the previous one, you want to make sure it is a primary. So again, you want to also make sure that your whole component has the right name. So you want to name this component to a button and then you have the variant of a primary and a secondary button. Now to go on and make this a bit of a, of a difference, give this a difference between primary and secondary. What I tend to like is, for example, use the primary with fill and the secondary with outline. So I will just simply delete the fill here. So I will delete the background and then add stroke. And then you can simply see one has a background, one has no background, but it has a stroke. So this is my favorite way of creating primary and secondary. And just to show you exactly why I have created uh, a component. So say, for example, I want to go here and start creating a design, for example, and choose here from a pre-selection, an iPhone screen, a frame, which is basically what you will start to add inside your inside your screen. This will be your screen you will be designing on. And let's say uh, I want to add a button. Now it should be as easy as going to assets. You can see local components. If you can't see it on local components, you can just simply search button, go here, drag and drop and and just put it inside. And now you have successfully added a button inside the screen, right? And what you want to check as well, that the muscle component has been successfully made, uh, you can restyle it 
if you want to restyle it so say you want to give it a radius for example a radius of eight and a radius of eight so you can see here if I choose secondary for example you can see that the radius is ref has reflected to any instances that this button has been created so say for example I want to uh, create a third variant so let's create a third variant by selecting this component clicking here on add variant and let's say I want to make to name this as black I want to have a black button in which case I can select this change the color of the fill into black then I want to select the text so I can see the text make the text white and make the arrow white and then you can see on all of my instances of wherever else on the design files I use the button the same component it has now reflected here so I, if I want I can select black and I can just as, as simple as that uh, change from variant to variant or whatever styling I might be changing say I want to add some effects here so if I go back to where this button has been reflected and I can see the difference that can show here as well that there is actually some effects so I can see the shadow that I just added on the button so yeah this is this is it as far as creating your first component try to make sure that you follow each step and you will see later on as we create more and more and we expand our designs as we expand our library you will be able to understand exactly why this is so beneficial and make sure you're using components make sure you're using frames make sure you're using um, auto layout etc etc and one important thing as well to mention as i said is it's very important to be using auto layout and frames is because it is the best way that you will be delivering your designs to your developers and firstly that's because it's a very similar philosophy on how developers work um, so the way frames work is a very similar way of how developers create a component of theirs with div blocks or a screen with div blocks it doesn't necessarily have to be a component it could be a screen or whatever it is they work a lot on div blocks so if you go inside here you can see for example the padding when they are inspecting your uh, designs when you go into into your designs they can straight away pick up their the values from here or when they are inspecting which is most likely to happen it's most likely that they will be inspecting your design files from here and this is what they will be looking at and the css right here so yeah they can see all the values take them from here straight away and apply them to uh, code and to show you an example of why am i saying this is if you go here for example and google straight away and go and inspect you can just go here on computed and very simply see that this is a very similar way of how they work themselves so they have again the component they have the padding they have the border the margins the positioning etc so they have the align items they they have it centered etc etc so as we look at it in more detail you can see that this is very similar to the development philosophy and yeah that is it thank you very much make sure you click like and subscribe subscribe to my channel if you found this helpful and you want to share with the rest of your team or uh, a new starter in your team feel free to share this with them and yeah see you in the next episode Thank you.